This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. It is a new era for covering the spread beginning today because as of now, we are a daily podcast, every weekday podcast here up on the same feed, trying to find you some good bets on the board based on the odds at FanDuel Sportsbook. And I'm pretty pumped for this journey. Now, of course, with the debut of a kind of new show, my flight yesterday got, got canceled, so I have no microphone, no camera, stuff like that. So it's going to look a little janky for day number one. But I think it's going to be a fun ride here. We're going to be coming at you every day, Monday through Friday. And it opens up a lot of stuff for us as podcasters, just trying to get you what you want as better. So my name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for numberfire.com. I'll be your host here for all five days throughout this week. And it's going to be a fun ride. And in case you missed our talk last week with, with Ed Fang uh, going through the new format for the show, our goal in going to being a daily show is to be able to cover more. With weekly shows, we can't cover, you know, the more in-depth stuff, the more granular stuff. We can't go through individual baseball games, which is what we'll be doing later on today. We can't do a full Monday Night Football prop breakdown, stuff like that. Now, we can. And I think that's fantastic from a, a consumer perspective. It also allows us to cover the topics we think you would probably want to hear something it would have been great to do earlier on we just didn't really have like the the resources to do so so i think this move was honestly a bit overdue now with that said we are going to be doing more podcasts but the thesis of the podcast is going to remain the same we've always been a numbers driven podcast that's why i wanted ed on with me initially was because I value Ed's, Ed's, Ed's brain, and I've been able to benefit from that for a very long time. We want to be a processed-based discussion still here on the show. We want to get the reasoning behind, the bets we like, and stuff like that. So my goal is to lay out all of this so you can make informed decisions about whether or not you agree with what I'm saying. And if you do, cool, awesome. Let's try to win some money together. But if you don't, that's awesome too. I want you to know, have the ability to decide for yourself. Do I like this bet? Do I not like this bet? I want you to have the tools to make that decision for yourself. So the the overall theme of the show will remain the same, even though we're going to be here more often. We're going to get you quicker bites uh, of podcasts just to get you on your way because, you know, shorter shelf life and stuff like that. But I think we'll still be able to get our typical process-based discussion, the reasoning for why we like a bet in here as well. Now, the schedule for this week, week number one here of the Daily Show is on covering the spread. Today and Thursday, we're going to talk daily MLB betting. Me by myself going through that day's MLB slate. I'll also talk some racing on Thursday. That's the other kind of like backdoor benefit of the show is that I get to talk racing if I want to because we have more time to do so. I know a lot of you don't care, so I'll stick all the racing stuff at the end of the show so you can just listen to the the, the racing part, dip off whenever you want to. I get it. It's okay. I'm not, my feelings will not be hurt if you turn the show off before it's done, but hey, I got to talk some Cup Series, Xfinity Series, Formula One. I think that's going to be fun. So today and Thursday, MLB, plus a little bit of NASCAR at the end. On Tuesday, we'll have Pitching Ninja, Rob Friedman. That's pretty fun. Uh, he's going to come on to talk strikeout props. You know him from Twitter, of course. Uh, but Rob, going to do some strikeout props for us. I'll ask him about strikeout props. I like to see what his thoughts are on those. That's going to be a lot of fun. That's every Tuesday. Also, every Tuesday, Brandon Gadula, you know him from here on Covering the Spread, but also on the Heat Check Fantasy Podcast with me. We'll have all, him on tomorrow to preview the first leg of the FedEx Cup playoffs for golf, break down his favorite bets of that. On Wednesday, of course, your favorite. Ed Fang will still be here every Wednesday. This Wednesday, specifically, we're going to have Joe Ostrowski on with us, too, um, to talk preseason NFL games because... I personally don't bet them, but I think there's a lot of value in betting them uh, because I just don't have the time to do the research necessary in such a news-oriented market. And I know that's a deficiency of mine. So we're going to have Joe on to talk about that with Ed. And Ed will, like I said, be here every Wednesday in season talking college football and then transitioning to World Cup, college basketball, a lot of stuff. So you'll still get your Ed fix in. We, we would not take that away from you. I don't want to take that away from me either. On Friday, J.J. Zacharyson, you know him as well, will come on to talk season-long NFL player props. We're going to have him on a couple times, I think, before the year because there are a lot of different markets you can bet there. So it's going to be a fun week. It's going to be a fun new format, and I'm excited to go through 
all of that with you here on covering the spread. We'll dig into today's MLB numbers in just one second. But of course, all these shows will be posted up on the, the covering the spread podcast feed. Find that wherever you get your podcasts. If you're already subscribed, nothing will change there. Those will still go to you right when they're posted. We'll also have these up on the FanDuel YouTube page. Those will go up after the fact. So if you want the numbers earlier, I'd recommend the podcast feed. But if you just want, uh, if you prefer to watch stuff on YouTube, we'll go up on there later on. So check out the FanDuel YouTube page and the Covering the Spread podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. NFL Week 1 odds are out, and now's the time to try FanDuel Sportsbook if you haven't already. Get in on the action early this season to help get you started. New FanDuel customers can get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. Think your favorite team is making the playoffs? Who is your dark horse to win the rushing title? Odds for that and much more are available at FanDuel Sportsbook app. Just sign up, place your first bet, and FanDuel will give you up to $1,000 back in free bets if you don't win. There is no better place to get ready for the football season than on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook and official sports betting partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only. Refund issued is non-withdrawable free bets that expire 14 days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG. In Arizona, call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Louisiana, 1-877-770-STOP. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. In Tennessee, call the red line at 1-800-889-9789. In Wyoming, 1-800-522-4700 or in West Virginia, 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Let's dig into today's MLB slate. The way we'll do this for today is I have a model for money lines and strikeout props. Those are the primary things I'll be discussing on the show because, again, we want to keep this process-based, numbers-based, stuff like that. That's, that's only markets where I have actual numbers. I will break down some home run props later on. My confidence level in those is, is lower, and I want to be fully transparent about that. I don't have numbers behind that. Brandon Gadula does post numbers up on NumberFire based on NumberFire's projections. You can find that there. I will talk through some spots I'm looking at, the prices I'd be willing to buy it on, and much more. As far as money lines go, I am showing some value on the Mets, which is kind of odd because their money line is minus 320, which puts their implied win odds for tonight at 76%. So it's a very big number, but I do think that it's actually pretty fair based on what my numbers are saying. So I've actually got options here with the money line being as large as it is, but my, my model is still showing value. I can just take the money line because value is value. I don't mind stacking a couple bucks in that way. Or I could look towards the run line. They're at, uh, at minus 152 at minus one and a half on the run line. And like I said, I have a money line model and a strikeout model. I do not have a run line model. So I personally, as a better, get uncomfortable betting markets where I don't have a model because I know that we can sometimes have some issues in terms of paying too much. You know, people think, okay, I want to, I want to go to the money line. It's a bit too steep. I'll turn to the run line instead automatically without investigating the actual number there. I get uncomfortable in those situations. And the hold in this market is actually a pretty decent amount higher than the run line market. The hold in the, the run line market is 4.57%. The hold in the money line market is 3.97%. So in general, rule of thumb, bet the lower hold market. And I am, a, as a result, I'm going to stick with the money line here. I have a model that backs up this number. I'm paying into a lower hold market than I would be otherwise. And I think long run, it's about 0.6 percentage points in the, the difference in the hold there, but that adds up really quickly over the long run. So I'm, I want to pay into the lower hold market and take the money the money line here. I do think the run line works if you prefer that. This offense is in a great spot against Justin Dunn, who is struggling down in AAA, coming up to make his 2022 debut for the Reds. The Chris Bassett is lights out right now, suppressing hard contact, getting ground balls with a, uh, a higher focus on his curveball recently. So you can do it. You can go towards the run line here. I think it's fully viable, but... I'm going to go my personal preferred route with the money line here at minus 320 on the Mets. One underdog where my, my numbers are showing some values on the Pirates at plus 200 against the Diamondbacks. That puts their implied win odds at 33%. I've got them 
closer to 40%. So this is a significant gap, and that should alleviate my concerns around my model's deficiencies here. But I'm not quite willing to bite on this one personally yet. I think the reason why I am hesitant, despite showing value, is I know where my numbers lag, where they might be a little bit deficient. And one of those spots where they can struggle is projecting guys who are stretching out from being relievers into being starters. And that's what Tyler Beatty is doing here for the Pirates. I'm not sure how long they will let him go for tonight. He struggled in his first start. The longer they let him go, the worse he'll probably pitch. And the Pirates bullpen is not good. So yes, my numbers are showing value here, but I don't, I don't trust my numbers ability to properly project a guy in BD specific position. So personally, I'm not going to go in on this one. I have seen some movements on their run line. Uh, their run line was even money at plus, uh, at plus one and a half. It's now plus one Oh two. So it does seem as though maybe if you want to go towards the run line, you might get a better number there later on. Uh, it was minus one away to 1.2. So it's been a lot of movement on that run line for the pirates. Personally, I think I will stay away from this one, but I do think that Arizona's being a bit overrated in this spot. I will say if this number continues to move and we see the Diamondbacks become even bigger favorites, maybe at that point I'm willing to pull the trigger, but that means I'm betting against people who are smart, putting their money into this market, and that's a bit concerning. So for me, probably a stay away, but if you want another spot where there is some value, the Pirates are the one at plus 200 in the money line that do grade out well. Let's go now to strikeout props. And my favorite one for the today is going to be in Keegan Thompson. And his number is also moving around a lot. That's one of the downsides of a uh, daily MLB show. Right now at FanDuel Sportsbook, his strikeout prop is four and a half with minus 102 on the over. I will say, though, you can still get a three and a half out there on Keegan Thompson. Uh, it's at minus 180. Pretty big number, obviously. I'm guessing they will get to four and a half at 1.2. Uh, at Bet Rivers, he's plus 112 to go over four and a half. And even at minus one and two, where FanDuel currently has him, um, I still think there is value there. Now, full disclosure, I've bet Thompson's strikeout prop over twice. And in those two games, he has combined for two strikeouts. Seems bad. But he has a 23.3% strikeout rate in eight starts since he started throwing his, his, his new slider that he has. And it's not like a good pitch in general, but it like makes his other pitches better. He's had seven plus strikeouts, seven plus, and his numbers are four and a half in five of those eight starts. I have Thompson projected for 5.7 strikeouts today. His over odds are around 60%. So, you know, I think that you look at this number. Um, I mean, technically, I'd be showing value down to minus 150 over four and a half. I'm not sure I'd go that far just because he is a bit volatile. I think if you can get this down to minus 120, that's the park where I would probably be jumping off. Minus 130, questioning it a little bit. Uh, minus 140, it's pretty much a fair market value at that point. So minus 102, I am still showing value. What I would say, though, is shop around. Try to identify if there are better numbers still hanging out there for Thompson because other markets are lagging behind where FanDuel has moved for him. So four and a half, uh, I think, at minus 102, totally okay with that. Again, down to minus 120, I will show good enough value to bet on that one. But check around. See if you can get plus money on uh, over four and a half. Thompson, in a good matchup, the wind at Wrigley Field blowing in, that's not going to aid strikeouts directly, but it will. what it will do is keep the ball in the yard, allow Thompson to go deeper in the game, and that should be a benefit for him too. So Thompson... Check around, see what you can get at plus four, uh, over four and a half. But even at minus 102, my numbers do show value in him because of the impact that new slider has had on the rest of his pitches. The other strikeout prop in my peripheral right now is Jordan Lyles over four and a half at plus 134. I have not bet this one yet. I have Lyles projected at 4.8 strikeouts. His over odds for me are 51.3%. So that's a lot better than plus 134, the implied odds there. And I would pull the trigger if Lyles had better numbers against righties because the strikeout rate against them is 19%, which is the exact same as it is versus lefties. So actually a bit lower against righties. And that's a big concern against a very righty heavy lineup, which is what the Blue Jays are. So technically my numbers are showing a bit of value, quite a bit, um, but it does seem as though there has been some money on the under in this one. Lyle's open at plus 118, or at least he's plus 118 this morning when I first looked. He's now plus 134. So there is a good shot you could get a better number on Lyle's later. I also would not be shocked if this gets to three and a half at some point. I have his overalls at three and a half at 67%. It's 51% at four and a half. Um, so 
use those numbers as your baseline to decide what you want to do with Jordan Lyles. If he gets the three and a half and he's, and the implied odds are, if it's like minus 150 or, or, or better, I might be willing to do that then. But four and a half, a bit hesitant. Again, there is a lot of value here, but it's a really rough matchup for him. He hasn't been perfect in this time. My numbers don't like him in this span, so we could see some issues with earned runs. But I do think that he's being a bit undervalued. So I am monitoring this market right now. It's a hold for me. Potentially could wind up diving in. Just want to see where the market goes on this first to decide if I want to buy in. So as of right now, nothing on Lyles for me, but keeping close tabs on that strikeout number to see where it goes and see if I want to buy in should the market sour on Lyles even more than it already has. Again, the numbers I have for Lyles over three and a half is 67%, over four and a half is 51%. Let's finish up here with some dingers for today, the daily dingers. And again, I don't have a model around this, so I want to be transparent in that because, again, this is not going to be my strongest market and has not been my strongest market historically. One team I am eyeing in this department is the Yankees. They're going to T-Mobile Park, and T-Mobile Park for home runs for righties is a very neutral spot, whereas Yankee Stadium is above average, but it's not as big of a downgrade for a righty to go to T-Mobile Park as it is for a lefty from Yankee Stadium. The reason that righties are interesting to me in this spot is because they're facing Logan Gilbert. And Gilbert actually has some pretty serious reverse platoon splits as a right-handed pitcher. And we saw this last week because Gilbert was at Yankee Stadium facing this very same Yankees team. And he really struggled. And I think that when you dig into the platoon splits for Gilbert, it does make a lot of sense. Looking at his numbers versus righties this year, letting up more hard contact. He's let up a 460 slugging percentage versus 308 against lefties. Now, that's over relatively small samples and slugging percentage takes longer to stabilize than a number like ISO, but his ISO is 190 against righties. So he's struggling with dingers right now. The strikeout rate has also been going down a bit recently for Gilbert across his past 11 starts. Uh, his strikeout rate is around 19%. So strikeout rates going down, letting up a lot of hard contact at the moment, lets up fly balls to righties and facing a lineup that has a lot of very powerful righties within it. That all adds up to me to making the Yankees a team I want to check in on on their home run prop market. Now, Aaron Judge is pl plus 210. I can't quite get there. You know, he's he's tremendous. I just can't quite get to plus 210 on Aaron Judge. Josh Donaldson plus 420, also a righty. I think the guy who stands out most to me, though, is Glaber Torres at plus 480. Torres, you know, we only have seven home runs versus righties so far this year, but a 46% fly ball rate. And it is seven home runs across 272 plate appearances. So. That's not going to get you to plus 480, but he's had a lot of doubles in there. I think he's close to having more than that. So to me, I would say if you want to check out the Yankees as a result of the fact they just saw Gilbert and they're seeing him again, the fact that the righties uh, tend to do better against him, they don't get a big downgrade or as big of a downgrade going to T-Mobile Park from Yankee Stadium as lefties do, I think that that process grades out well. Labor Torres plus 480 being the key guy who stands out to me there in the home run prop market. I do have some interest in the Orioles for today. They're facing Yusei Kikuchi, who's letting up a, a lot of hard contact still, even as he's come back and been tooling, tinkering around with his approach. I just don't like any of the Orioles' numbers at FanDuel right now. Ryan Mountcastle, plus 350. Cedric Mullins, plus 390. He can't hit lefties, so it's not a, that's not a concern for me, just a, a pretty short number. Lower down, Jorge Mateo it has been shortening here at FanDuel Sportsbook. He was 6-1 to one this morning. He's now plus 560, so it seems like there has been at least some interest in Mateo there. So I can't quite get to that number, but I will say earlier on this morning, there were some longer odds on Mateo to go deep. And Mateo, five home runs versus lefties so far this year, puts the ball in the air, has a 200 ISO versus lefties. I would check out what his number is. And if you can get him somewhere around eight, nine to one, I think that might be the point where you eventually do buy in and bite that bullet. At plus 560, I can't do it at FanDuel, but I do think there have been some softer numbers in the market so far today. And I would check them out to see where they're out of Mateo specifically because he could be a longer shot to go deep. So Glaber Torres at FanDuel, Jorge Mateo elsewhere, the key guys I am looking out for dinger props for today. 
That's all we got here for this first daily show of Covering the Spread. Like I said, we're going to have this show up on both the FanDuel YouTube page and on the Covering the Spread podcast feed each and every weekday. So search for Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts, and then also go to the FanDuel YouTube page and subscribe there. And if you like this new format, if you have feedback on it, feel free to leave us a review. You can also tweet at me on Twitter, at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. It's a new show. It's a new format, so more than open to taking your feedback there and adjusting to make this show however you see it best. Good luck to you with your bets for today. We are back once again tomorrow to talk with Pitching Ninja about strikeout props and Brandon Gadilla to break down some PGA as well. Going to be a blast this upcoming week. We'll talk to you soon. This has been Covering the Spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 